We're long overdue for another airbrush review on this channel. So today we're looking at a pretty inexpensive one, which is very popular here in the United States. This airbrush is called the Central Pneumatic Deluxe Airbrush Kit, which is sold by Harbor Freight. If you're not from the US, Harbor Freight is kind of like a discount tool store that sells nearly every tool imaginable. They even started selling some high-end professional tools in the last few years, like the Icon line, which is fantastic. But the airbrush we're looking at today is part of their budget line, and this one usually sells for around $20, but in store, you could usually pick it up for $15 or $16 with a coupon. Besides the airbrush, in Inside the box, you get a glass jar, which is siphon fed, which is about three quarters of an ounce. And you also get one of these small cups, which is actually pretty high quality. This siphon cup holds about five milliliters of paint, but it has one major flaw that we'll talk about later. You also get one of these small stamped metal wrenches to remove the nozzle. Something unique with this airbrush is that you get this small clip, which you can mount to your desk or to a wall with a few screws. And then this is used to hold your airbrush. I don't know if anyone used this before, but I think this is great. It's a really cool way to store your airbrush while you're not using it. For this review, I'm gonna be using the siphon fed cup, and this is just held in by friction. And when it's in the bottom like this, you could rotate it to the left or to the right, depending on which way you paint. The trigger stands a little tall, but it still feels very comfortable, and the airbrush feels nice in the hand. Of course, this airbrush is a double action. That means when you press down, you get air, and you pull back, you get paint. This means that you can control how much paint you spray by how far you pull back on that trigger. If you're just getting into fine art or you're working on models or painting miniatures, you definitely want to pick up a double action airbrush. Single action airbrushes are more like a can of spray paint. You just have a little bit more control with it. And if you're just getting into airbrushing, a low price double action airbrush like this one is not a bad place to start. Something I haven't seen on any other airbrushes is a small screw on the top right here. If you tighten this screw down, you're basically turning this into a single action airbrush. So now when I press down, not only do I get air, but paint. Definitely a cool and unique feature. I wouldn't use this, but it's there if you want it. The rear handle is equipped with a cutaway. This is great for quickly flushing out any clogs in the nozzle. And also you can remove the needle without having to remove the back handle. This is a page right out of Badger Airbrushes. I love this feature. It's one of the few airbrushes that I paint with the handle on because I always have easy access to that needle. If you compare the Central Pneumatic Airbrush to any of the big ones on the right, it's a big step down. The build's quality is nowhere near what you'd get from a Harder and Steamback, an Iwata, or even a GSI Creos. But for under 20 US dollars, this is definitely a good airbrush to pick up if you're a beginner and you just kind of want to test out airbrushing. Maybe you paint once or twice a year or if you want a backup to spray varnishes or clear coats. As someone who uses high-end and expensive airbrushes, I'm telling you there's nothing wrong with starting with an inexpensive one. So let's break down the Central Pneumatic airbrush and take a look at some of the internal parts. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the needle and the handle. Unfortunately, because of the build quality, the needle sometimes gets stuck when you're removing it or placing it back in. It's not a deal breaker, the airbrush works just fine. It's just something you wouldn't see in a higher-end brand. From here, we can unscrew the back spring assembly, which consists of three parts. Here we have the housing, the needle guide, and the spring. One thing I really like is that back trigger lever is connected to the spring guide. This makes breaking down the rear assembly so much easier. After removing the cap, we have access to the nozzle. This is a very small one, which is a screw-in. I don't ever recommend removing this unless you absolutely have to. You can't really buy any sort of replacements for this airbrush. You could probably buy third-party parts on eBay or Amazon, but... They're not made easily accessible through Harbor Freight, so if anything breaks on this airbrush, you're kind of stuck. So far, this is the biggest negative to me. Harbor Freight should really be selling needles and nozzles because they break all the time. I paint nearly every day, and I don't think I've gone six to nine months without breaking a needle or a nozzle, so Harbor Freight should really be offering these. To remove the head assembly, I recommend picking up a pair of these soft jaw pliers. I'll have a link to them down below. And you can see here that the head has three holes on it to direct the airflow over the nozzle and needle tip. It also has a small gasket there, which I always like. It just helps seal it up better. So that's all you ever need to break down if you need to clean your airbrush. I never go further than this. There's really no need to. So the build quality is okay. It's nothing great, nothing special. But again, for $20 or under $20, it's really a good bargain. According to the manual, this airbrush is equipped with a 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle. That's a great size for general use airbrushing. You could spray thicker paints like varnishes through it. And also with 0.35, you can get in for some pretty good detail. One thing I really don't like about this head assembly is you don't have access to the needle tip like you do in most other airbrushes. This head assembly needs to be on in order for the airbrush to spray. And that means you don't have access to clean the tip of the needle. And this is important because a lot of times you get tip dry and it's important to just take your fingers and clean it off once in a while. But since this airbrush is designed to spray at higher PSIs, 
that shouldn't be a problem because if you're spraying at 30 or 35, you're not going to have to worry about clogs because it's just going to blow them right out anyway. So let's move along to some of the paint tests. For the test, I'm spraying at 20 PSI with the needle fully retracted. As you can see here in Photoshop, we get a spraying of right around 19 degrees. This is about what I'd expect from a 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle. And as you can see from this chart of every airbrush I reviewed on this channel, that this number is just smaller than the Iwata Eclipse and the Badger Patriot 105 meaning that in theory, it should spray a thinner line than those. As I say in all my other reviews, every airbrush is gonna give you about the same size line of right around a quarter of a millimeter, and this airbrush is gonna be no different. We'll see that in the paint tests. Now this airbrush is designed to be sprayed at 30 PSI, but to keep these tests consistent, I'm spraying at 20 PSI at three and a half inches away, and we can see we get an airspeed of around seven meters per second. So a higher airspeed like this means this airbrush is gonna be good to spray some thicker paints through. It's not gonna have any trouble forcing them out. It's also siphon fed, so a higher airspeed is gonna help pull that paint up from the cup. One thing I don't really like about higher airspeeds like this is that it's kind of hard to get in close to paint small details just because you feel that air blowing back. If you ever try to detail airbrush like the Iwata Micron or the GSI Krios PS771, you'll know that those have much lower air speeds at a similar PSI, and it's just a lot more comfortable to get close to your subject to paint in those small details. But of course, this is a very different airbrush. It's not designed to do detail work, but again, at that 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle combo, you'll see that we can get in, get some pretty decent detail with it. I'm spraying Createx Illustration colors here at the recommended PSI of 30, and I have no problems painting in thin lines. I'm altering and varying the line width of each of these lines just by how far I pull back on the trigger and how close it is to the surface. And I have no trouble painting in any of these. It sprays absolutely fine. The smallest line I can get is right around a third of a millimeter, which is just slightly larger than what you get from an Iwata Eclipse. And I don't think that has anything to do with the way this airbrush sprays. It's just because I'm not able to remove the nozzle cap, so I just can't get as close as I can with other airbrushes. And just like all my other reviews, I'm painting a very simple still life here. It took me about 10 minutes to complete. And this is just so I could talk about my opinions about how this airbrush sprays. Starting with this dark background, I think this is where the airbrush excels. It's so easy to spray a large volume of paint and just fill in that background to one solid color of black. I'm only using one color for this painting, which is transparent black. And to adjust my values, I adjust how much paint I spray. If I want a darker area, like on top, I spray more. And at the bottom here, where it's a little bit lighter, I spray less paint. When I was adjusting the amount of paint that I was spraying, I had zero complaints here. This really performed exactly the way I wanted it to. When I pulled back a certain amount, I got the same amount of paint every single time. So it was reliable and it was consistent. Since this airbrush is siphon fed, you're definitely gonna need that higher PSI, which I'm not crazy about. You need at least 30 PSI. That way the Venturi effect is gonna create a suction, which is gonna pull the paint up from the bottom of that cup. If you try to use a lower PSI, let's say below 20, like you would with an Iwata Micron, it's really hard for it to pull paint up from the cup and it just, it gets very inconsistent. So with an airbrush like this, you definitely wanna keep that PSI up right around 30. One thing I didn't like was the cup design. In order to spray correctly, the cup needs to be half filled. That's because the siphon cup doesn't go down to the very bottom like it does in some other siphon fed airbrushes. If you use the bottle, you're not gonna to have to worry about this, but just understand if you're using the cup, you're gonna to have to waste a lot of paint, unfortunately. So as I completed this painting, I have to say this airbrush is definitely not bad at all. You could do plenty with it. It's not gonna hold you back. I would of course always recommend picking up a better one if you have the budget, maybe go with something like Badger or the Neo for Iwata, both are under $100. But if you're the type of person who's gonna use an airbrush once or twice a year, or maybe you just wanna pick one up to see if you like it, this is definitely a great option. For me personally, I like to use an airbrush like this to spray a varnish or a clear coat. I generally use a spray gun for that, but sometimes the painting's small and I don't want to bring out, you know, the large compressor and all that. So something like this usually works really well. And the last things we need to go over are the measurements. So when I press down for air, I get a distance of 1.36 millimeters. That's comfortable. It's a little bit farther than some of the others, but it feels just fine. And when I pull back on the trigger for paint, I get a distance of about a half a millimeter. This is a little bit farther back than other airbrushes, but it's reliable and it always sprays at that same point. And the last thing I want to go over is checking the nozzle for air leak. So what I'm doing is I'm placing some soapy water on the nozzle and you can see with my left hand, I'm pressing down the trigger for air and there's no bubbles coming out, meaning that there's no air leaks. 
I've reviewed airbrushes on this channel, which were five to 10 times the price of this one, and they had air leaks. So this was really impressive and I'm happy to see it. So that's gonna be it for this review. I hope it was helpful for some of you looking to pick this one up and thank you so much for watching.